So hi guys, so I trust you enjoyed the first video and we're going to continue with the derivative, it's exploring what we mean by the slope and we're going to take uh, several functions and try to find the derivative with what we established yesterday. So WTF basically means what the F prime. Okay, so you recall from yesterday, we motivated for the strange beast of an expression, the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x uh, all over h as h tends to zero. We notice they're not at h equal to zero. And we call that or refer to that as the gradient or the average gradient. And we give it a special uh, notation when we call it f prime of x. So remind yourself, if you go back, this was nothing more than y2 and this was y1. What is h? That was nothing more than delta x, which is x2 minus x1. So we're going to use this, we're going to apply this to several functions today. Okay, so as a first example, we're going to look at fx, f of x equal to c, where c is a positive constant, so you have a look, the graph is horizontal. It's pretty obvious that the slope of this graph is actually zero. So let's use our definition of the gradient and show that it is indeed zero. So we are given f of x equals to c. Remind ourselves we need an f of x plus h. Now what, what is that? If this is x and take some neighboring point x plus h, you notice that f of x is c. f of x plus h is also c. The function is constant there, so we have that. So write down the full formula always. I'm not sure how many terms I've probably a billion or more. Uh, and also learn to write mathematics. So this is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h tends to zero. I find many a time you know what to do, you know what you're thinking, but it's really difficult for students to, to put this down in a logical uh, sequential manner. So learn to write mathematics. So limit, as we know it, f of x plus h is c minus f of x, that all of h as h tends to zero, not equal to zero, and hence, as we have expected, the answer is zero. So the derivative of this constant function is zero, and we already knew that, right? Cool stuff. Okay, let's take another simple function, f of x equal to x. That's just a straight line that you see passing through the origin. So we are given f of x equals to x, and what is f of x plus h? Well, wherever there's an x, you'll replace it by x plus h. Write down the definition of the derivative. Again, and I think by the end of metric, you'll write this so many times that you'd want to vomit after seeing it that many a time. f of x over h like this. And then just write down what's given. f of x plus h is x plus h. What is f of x? It's x, whoa, all over h, and you can see as h tends to zero, the x's will cancel, they have a limit of, now I need to write this down properly, h over h as h tends to zero, which is one. So the derivative of y equal to x, or f of x equal to x, is one. Think about that very carefully. I mean, you've got this function y equals to x. It has form, remember from school, y equals to mx plus c. And because it passes through the origin, we know the, the y-intercept is zero. The number in front of x is the slope m. And we know the number sitting in front is one. And there's the one over there. Get the point. OK, let's try something different. I'll let you try y equal to x squared to work out the gradient there. But let's us from first principles. That's what we need to use. From first principles, work at the gradient of f of x equal to x squared plus 1. So the first thing we need is, yes, there we have it. That's pretty obvious. We're given that. What is f of x plus h? f of x plus h is nothing more than wherever there's an x, replace it with x plus h. So it must be all squared plus 1. So square that out. Let's do that now. So it's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 1. <clears throat> Squaring a binomial, add one to it. Again, now write down, we, we know this is almost predictable, it's almost algorithmic. What do we write here? f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h tends to zero. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, f of x plus h, what is that? It's this whole thing over here. Don't be shy, write that out. 2xh plus h squared plus 1 minus, be careful here, the brackets, so it's x squared plus 1, write neatly. Whoops, all over h, and as h tends to 0, you'll find the x squared and x squared cancels out, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel. If you didn't have the bracket, you'd be in trouble. So eventually what you're left with is something very simple. You have limit. Let's just write this out. You write it as 2xh plus h squared all over h as h tends to 0. And <laughs> this with no stretch of the imagination. Right? No special talent required here. If you had to simplify that, that just becomes the limit of 2x plus h as h tends to 0. And the final answer for sure is God made lap apples. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. We'll speak more about that in the next lecture, but just get a feel for how we'd work out the derivative of this function from first principles. I'm not even sure why I'm screaming here. I think I'm excited. Now, just with all exams, they never ever give you the simple stuff, yeah? You know that you do all the simple stuff in class and suddenly, boom, you are faced with an incredibly difficult question you've never seen before. So let's try something like f of x equal to root x. How do we deal with that? Well, f of x plus h, remember, wherever there's an x, we're going to write x plus h. Again, let's write down the definition. We're doing this from first principles, so the limit f of x plus h. No thinking involved here, all of all of h as h tends to zero. What is f of ah, root of x plus h minus root of x all over h as, whoa, look at that, limit as h tends, right neatly, what is that, come on. What do we do here? Please don't tell me the root x and the minus root x cancels. Oh my goodness. I'll just jump off a building. You cannot do that. x plus h there, root of, is a single term. You can't split that up. So what do we do? What do we do best? You know, we got that. Here's something I want you to think about very carefully. Slightly different. So this becomes the limit. Let me try and write neatly. Oh my goodness, look at my writing. So this I'll write as root of x plus h. Oh my goodness. All over that, all over h. And then I'm going to multiply by 1, but in a very curious way. Root of x plus h plus root of x divided by root of x plus h plus root of x. That's multiplying by 1. I haven't changed the problem. And if you look at the top, something interesting happens there. What happens at the top, you notice that that is like a minus b into a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared. So this now becomes the limit. Follow me here. If I square x plus h, the root of that, I will just get x plus h minus, and if I square root of x, I'll get x. Whoa, beautiful. All over. Now watch what happens at the bottom. You're going to have h into the use of brackets is beautiful and it's a must here plus root of x so notice as h tends to zero something incredible happens here the x and x cancels out what have we left we left an h over h so that and we left with a one at the top right so we have the limit follow me yeah, and focus the limit of one all over the root of x plus h or plus root x when h tends to zero, when h tends to zero, please check this out. The answer turns out, now what do you think about this, think about this very carefully, is one over two root x, which is the final answer. And we'll speak more about that in the next lecture. Slow it down, follow it, don't copy, don't assume you understand, work through it. Of course, the final metric exams, they will entertain you with beautiful questions like, and you can try this at home, and I'll, I'll put this up on my on my website, Online Tuition. You can have a look at it under the, the free videos. Uh, one would be something like this, f of x equals, so not root x anymore, but root of x plus one. As difficult as it gets in metric, let's try to do this. That's one. Two, why do we keep saying f of x? Let's change it. Let's say, 
g of x and that is equal to 1 over x <laughs> that's a nice one you think it's simple hmm? i can give the answer g prime of x is minus 1 over x squared but use first principle to show that g prime you show that g prime of x is minus 1 over x squared and look we're sitting around let's look at h of x equal to 1 over x plus 1. what is the derivative of that what is h prime of x equal to hmm? there we go here what is f prime of x equal to do these things and i think you'd have no problems in your tests and exams you know you gotta extend yourself don't do the simple stuff and sort of almost coke yourself into believing hey this stuff is easy and i'm good no 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 go in for the difficult stuff stretch yourself enough not to break yourself but to actually understand the more difficult concepts the so-called level four questions that people refer to uh in the exams um and make up stuff and then there's a challenge to you if you finish trig i know in grade 11 the stuff they get this is not part of the syllabus but i'm thinking you know what out of interest out of curiosity um you know if you're given a function k of x equal to sine x can you prove that the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x from first principles not in the syllabus but i'm thinking you know what you had a bra you had a function i know there's no gathering of lots of people more than n where n is a small number uh you may want to discuss this um so can you prove that the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x from first principles so i can't wait for the next lecture see you on the other side of 11.